everybody. Hi, it's Becky from PowerToolsWithThread.com. Oh, I just made this placemat. It turned out so cute. I absolutely love it. This is a Designs by Juju chicken placemat. I'll put a link below to the pattern and also to a fabric kit you can get uh, so that you can make yours look just like mine. I think this is just absolutely precious. So cute. It just screams spring and I really had a lot of fun making it. So I am going to put this video into four parts. The first part is all about fabric prep, getting it cut, using the scan and cut to cut out your pieces. You don't have to use a fabric kit. You can certainly source your own fabrics and use fabrics out of your stash and make them any color way that you want. The second video is using the single needle embroidery machine. The third video is using the multi-needle embroidery machine and then the fourth video is all about finishing and getting this uh, the binding on and the backing and all that so this has been a great time and I really enjoyed it and I hope you do too. I need to cut my three background fabrics and I have this green piece right here, it has like a diamond print on it. This is the background fabric for the green kit. And I've already got SF-101 on the back of the entire piece. And I also did that for the background fabric for the smaller blocks. And the first cut for chicken block one is seven and a half by nine. So this entire piece, is just a little bit over 10, but I have about 10 and a quarter. So I'm going to go to the seven and a half inch mark. And keep in mind that it's going to be trimmed away. So if your edge is not perfectly straight over here, that's just fine because you're going to cut that away anyway. So I'm going to do a seven and a half inch piece. This is chicken block one. And then I need another seven and a half by 10. And I'm not going to trim this down. Block one needs seven and a half by nine. I'm just gonna leave this as is, cause again, it's all gonna be cut away. And then I need another seven and a half inch piece right here. Okay, and that's chicken block two. And then my third piece is seven and a half so that's great there is chicken block three so that's done and then i'm going to go ahead and cut the background fabric for the swirl blocks and that is uh seven and a half by five and a half so this is very handy to use a square ruler when you need to do this. So it says cut two. And let's, yep, that's it. So this entire piece is six inches. And I'm going to cut two. There's one. There's two. Okay, and then the background fabric for Bless Our Nest is seven and a quarter. And I have right at seven and a quarter, so this was perfect. Left, okay, there. That's the easy way to cut that. That makes the most use of fabric. So we've got those blocks ready to go now. And now I need to cut my chicken fabric and that is the white piece right here. It does not have SF-101 on the back. And the chicken fabric for block one is four and three quarters by five. As a reminder, I'm using the pattern for the six by 10 hoop. And I need 4.75 by five. So this is a six and a half inch strip approximately that I have. And my chicken fabric here is four and three quarters by five. 
So I'm going to cut the smallest in the length, four and three quarters here. There is chicken fabric for block one. Chicken fabric for block two is five by six. I'm going to cut the shortest piece since this is six and a half, five inches. Okay. And my chicken fabric for block three is five and a quarter square. So let me go to five and a quarter. Okay. And a little bit left over there on that one. That's good. Put that aside. I wanted to show you, I have a very unorthodox method of doing heat and bond on the back of my pieces. I will put a piece out and I take my fabric, right side up of course, and put it to the gluey side of the heat and bond. And I cover the edge of the heat and bond by just a couple of threads and make sure that it's on there so that um, the edge of the fabric is over the edge of the heat and bond and then I'll take another piece of fabric put it right on uh, next to it a couple of threads over the edge so I cannot I don't have any heat and bond in between the two I'll take my other piece and I just kind of layer them like this okay and then I take my iron and I put and I'll tack it down onto the heat and bond just like this so I'm not getting any heat and bond on my iron okay then I'll go to the cutting table and I'll take my rotary cutter and I go just a thread or two and cut on the fabric edge. Pull this up and then do this. I hate putting heat and bond on the back of fabrics. It's so annoying, so I'm lazy. But this way works pretty well and it's pretty quick. Now I'm going to go back over to the iron and I'm going to iron these from the back side. Doing any kind of fussy cutting for heat and bond is just so time consuming and annoying. I need to make some cut files for all of the applique pieces in the Designs by Juju Chicken Placemat. And I'll put a link to a video right up here to tell you how to download the design and how to extract the design from a zip file and how to file it on your computer. So please check that out if you're not familiar with how to do that. It's very, very easy and I go uh, baby steps to help you do that. And the reason you can see the designs on my computer screen is because I have a utility called Embrilliance Thumbnailer installed on my computer and it allows me to see embroidery designs that look like icons, which is very handy. What I want to do first is I really want to look at these and make sure I get the right one. I don't want to accidentally grab the wrong design. For this design, you can make it either using a 5 by 7 hoop or a 6 by 10 hoop. I'm going to use the 6x10. So I am going to click anywhere on my screen and I'm going to right click and the menu that comes up, I'm going to click new and I'm going to go to folder. And in the new folder, I'm going to call it 5x7 and hit enter. Then I'm going to click on all of those blocks that are identified as a five by seven. I'm gonna click it, I'm gonna hold down my control key on my keyboard, and I'm gonna click the next one, and the next one, and this one, and this one. And all the rest of them are the six by tens, and those are the ones I want to use. So right now, I'm just going to, I've let go of the control key. I'm going to click on it one time and drag them over. And you see it says move to five by seven. 
and there they go. So there are the files that I need, and it looks a lot easier with a lot less files. Now, also one of the things I want to do is I want to rename these files so that I don't get confused with which one is which. And I'm going to rename them according to the instructions. So the chicken with the hat is chicken one. I'm just going to click on it one time. I'm going to right click. And down here at the bottom, it says show more options. I am using Windows 11. And I'm going to go to rename. And just right up here next to chicken, I'm going to put a one. And space. Chicken one. All right, and then the next one has the nest, and that's this one. That is chicken two. This is just so the number of the design corresponds to the way the chicken is identified in the instructions. Chicken two, placemat, enter. And then this one would be chicken three. And show more options, rename, click in the block three space. Enter there. So now my chickens are identified as chicken one, chicken two, chicken three. And these right here are the swirl blocks. And this is the blessing uh, block. So right click. Okay. There, now everything is named and it matches all of the instructions. So the first thing I need to do is I'm going to take chicken one, which is the one with the hat, and I'm going to open up in brilliance right now. And I'm going to click on my folder down here at the bottom. Let me minimize this. Let me make this a little smaller. Up here in the top corner, you have a minimize button. You have a Reduce, you know, you can make the block smaller or you can click out of it and make it go away. I'm going to click this just one time and I'm going to take this chicken and grab a hold of it and drag it into in brilliance. There we go. Move this over and minimize it. All right, that looks great. So the design has automatically centered itself in the hoop and I want to use, you can tell down here, the hoop is 14 and 3 16 by 7 and 7 8. That's for my multi-needle. And I'm going to make this one in the luminaire, and I want to use the 6 by 10 hoop. So you can come up to this yellow folder up here in the top in Preferences, and it opens up automatically to hoops. And I want to choose the 6 by 10 hoop. And if you're not sure, you can kind of scroll around and it will tell you down here at the bottom the number of the hoop. I don't even know if I have a 6 by 10 hoop in here. Let's look. I'm going to click through them until I find. There it is. 160 by 260, approximately 6 by 10. That's perfect. I'm going to click OK. And now I need to make appliques out of the design file. And over here on the right hand side, there is the objects panel and there is the chicken placemat right there, six by 10. I am going to, first of all, before I do that, I want to change this to my preferred thread, which is isocord. So I'm going to click color and I'm just going to click preferred. If you want to put your own preferred thread, because see, the digitizer had it come up with brother embroidery, and that's just basic how that came up. That's fine. You can click on thread, and you can select a thread brand from the drop-down menu. You can choose any one that you want. I'm going to choose Isocord Poly, and then you can click this button, Use as my preferred thread brand, like that, and click OK. So it just automatically changed it there. Or once you pull in a design and you want to change it to your preferred thread brand, you can just click this preferred button right here. I'm going to open up the design by clicking on the plus sign and look at all of the design elements. These are all of the steps that are going to happen to make the chicken. And so, for instance, 
right here, I'm going to click on this one. This is the placement line for the batting. There's the tack down line for the batting, which also doubles as the placement line for your background fabric. And then there is the tack down line for your background fabric. There's your background quilting. And there is the placement line for the fabric for the chicken. Those are the objects within the design that we want to create SVG files from so that they fit just fine. So it, I can continue through. So there's the tack down line for the chicken, and then there's the placement line for the band around the hat and so on. So I'm going to go back up to this placement line. And in order to get a cut file for it, you just come down to this color chip right here in the color where the thread is highlighted. I'm going to click on the color chip. And that opens up a new box and it's the thread box. And in the thread box, there is color and applique. I'm going to click the applique tab. The style says not applique. I'm going to hit the drop down and it says applique position, which is another term for the placement line for the fabric. This one right here is the tack down. That's tacking down the material. So I'm going to choose position and you get a box right here that says cutting inflate 1.5 millimeters and I'm going to click save. That's all you have to do. The 1.5 millimeters fits fine with designs by Juju Designs and I'm just going to click save and when you click save it comes up automatically as a scalable vector graphic. I want to hit my drop down arrow and I'm going to go to my documents and I'm going to go ahead and save it in the design file right here. So chicken one placemat block two, six by 10. That's not what I want to call it. I want to call it chicken body, just like that. And I'm going to click save. And it comes up with a dots per inch change. I'm not going to fiddle with that. I'm just going to tell it okay. And then you can click okay. And it's that's it. That's how easy that is to do. So again, we'll click on through here. There's the tack down line for the chicken. Here is the placement line for the hat band. So I'm going to click on the color chip. The digitizer has made it so that everything that is a placement line is the same color. So there is Tropicana, 2220 Tropicana color. Here it is again. So I know that that is the placement line. And I'm going to click the applique tab. I'm going to tell it position and save and I'm going to call it hat band save and tell it okay tell it okay I'm gonna keep going tack down line for the hat band placement line for the hat click on the color chip go to applique hit the drop down applique position click save you don't have to do anything with it and I'm going to call it hat and save and OK and OK. This is very simple to do. You can see here it's changing to applique position. That's fine. Not a big deal. It's not going to make a difference in the way it stitches. The next one is the flower. I'm going to click on it, click on the color chip, click applique, tell it position, click save flower and save and okay and okay there is the tack down line here's another one the Tropicana sunglasses I'm gonna click the chip oops I forgot let me do it again click applique click save I'm gonna call it Sunglasses, save, okay, Look out of that, okay, tack down, there are the eggs, okay, click the chip, tap okay,
And let's see if we've got anything else. Tack down. There's the final satin stitch on the chicken. There's the beak. There's the waddle. Top of the hat. Hat band. Okay, all the rest of this is final satin stitching. So we don't have any other kind of applique that are in the rest of the design, which is great. Now I'm going to go back here to my folder and I want to show you these all look like Microsoft Edge icons. And I'm going to go up here to the View tab and I'm going to go down to the Details. And when you go to Details, here they are and they look like the Edge icon and then it tells you Microsoft Edge HTML. The reason that happens is because the computer does not recognize as one of its native file formats an SVG, a cut file. It doesn't know what to do with that, so it automatically just assigns it an icon and it's going to call it Microsoft Edge. But don't worry, you will be able to use this as a cut file and I can show you that by going out to the Brother Canvas website. When you get to the Brother Canvas website, you can just log in and click this. And I'm just going to X out of this. There is a PC version of Canvas Workspace. I prefer to use the online version because I never use it without being on the internet. If you don't have good internet or you want to work in Canvas without being on the internet, then you can download this and you can use it on your home computer. I'm going to X out of this and I'm going to go to new project. I want to get a new mat. Across the top up here, there are some icons and I want to go to this icon right here that says import SVG. It says SVG. Click that and it wants to know, well, where do you want to get the file from? So I'm going to choose file and from my chicken placemat folder, I'm going to pull up chicken body. You can only do these one at a time. So I'm going to click open and see now it says chicken body SVG. If this was not an SVG file, you'd get an error message from the website. I'm going to click OK and pull it in. That looks good. I'm going to take it. I'm going to put it down here in this corner of the mat. And each time you pull in a file, it's going to load right up here in this corner. And I'm going to move it and put it in such a place that I can put the square of whatever fabric I need in order to cut that out. So I'm going to do another one now. I'm going to click SVG. I'm going to choose File. And I'm going to click the eggs and open. OK. And the eggs, uh-oh. Let me control Z because I moved it. These are three separate files. I'm going to group. I'm just going to grab them all and bring them on down here because it's going to get cut in the same white fabric as the body. So I'm going to grab this. I'm just going to move it over a tiny bit and grab this one and move it over a tiny bit there. So now I know I need to put my fabric pieces all right here. SVG, choose file, flower, open, OK. Grab my flower, going to put it right over here. So I've got plenty of space here to cut all my pieces out put my fabric on the mat so it's going to get everything. I want to save this. And so up here in the top in this box that says project title, I'm going to change it to chicken. Whoop. Let me back up. Let me DBJJ chicken one. There we go. And I can go over here to the project tab. And there's an inbox with an arrow and a plus sign. I'm going to hit that. Uh-oh. What is that about? Let me click OK. Let's do it again. 
BBJJ. I put a dash there. Sometimes computers don't like spaces. Let's go to project and save. Saving this project is completed. Okay, great. Now I am ready to send it down to the scan and cut and cut out my pieces. So I'm going to click the download button. And when you click the download button, you get two choices. You can download it to your computer as an FCM file, or you can download it to the scan and cut. And I'm going to do that. I'll put a link right up here to see how to connect your scan and cut to the Brother Canvas. And it says scan and cut transfer is ready. You do have to have your machine turned on in order to be able to do this. I'm just going to click close and I'm all finished. I'm ready to cut out my pieces. All right, I'm here at the scan and cut and I have the aqua or teal colored low tack mat. And my favorite little trick to clean the mat, I do it before every time I use it, is these are Costco's version of Cottonelle wipes. That's what these are. And I like them because they have no oil in them, they have no alcohol in them, and they won't leave little fibers on your mat. So I just found them to be very helpful, and they're not too wet. They just work great. See, they get little gooky stuff off your mat. You know, that's a real term, gooky stuff. So I do this before every time I use it. There, okay. So that's nice and clean. And I'm going to touch the screen and it says it will move. And then on the screen, there are two sets of buttons. I have pattern and scan, and down here is retrieve data. And I'm gonna click that one, and it wants to know where are you gonna get it from. So you can get it from the machine itself, from the cloud, from a USB, or from a computer. I'm gonna get it from the cloud. And there is there are all the parts for my chickens. And I have the fabric now. I've already got heat and bond on the back. So again, I'm using the low tack mat. I'm gonna put the fabric approximately where the part is. That's why I pull it up on the screen so I can kind of tell where I need to put my fabric. But it doesn't have to be exact because we're going to scan in the fabric. There's the eggs. And here is, I'm going to put the flower like right over here. I'll put all the little pieces in the same area. And my sunglasses right there. And here's my hat band right here, like that. And then here is my hat put that right there. So you can see the cut pieces are much larger than the actual cut file. So I'm just going to put it in now. Then there's an arrow up here at the top that tells you which way to put the mat. So I just rubbed it on with my fingers. That was all. And I'm going to touch this. There are three buttons right here. You have home, the mat load and unload and pause. And I'm going to load the mat. All right, so on the screen, there are there's add, edit, there are three buttons right here, and then save and okay. In the middle of the three buttons is a blue button with a bar, looks like a blue square with a bar, and that is the scan icon. I'm gonna touch that and then just hit start. It's going to scan the mat. Okay, so now I can see where the fabric is and where stuff needs to go and it's going to allow me to move things around on the screen. So I can't really see all the designs because I've got black fabric and, and whatnot. So over here on the wrench, I'm gonna to touch that and where it says background, I'm gonna go from dark to light and I'm gonna tell it okay. There, now I can see. I'm gonna take my flower and I'm gonna move it right there in the middle of the yellow. I'm going to take 
my sunglasses and move them onto the black. There's my hat band. Put that right on there. And that looks like everything is going to fit. And I'm ready to cut it out. If your fabric is lifting a little bit, you can always use scotch tape and put a piece of scotch tape on your corners and hold it down. There are lots of little tricks you can do. Don't be afraid to do that. All right, I'm all done. I'm gonna tell it okay. And it says, please select. And I'm gonna hit cut. And I make sure that half cut is off and I'm just gonna hit start. It says it'll be done within two minutes. All right, we're all finished. Let's take a look, see how it turned out. Get my little spatula. Oh, that turned out perfect. There we go. Just kind of scrape underneath it so that you don't stretch your, whoop, oh, you don't stretch it at all. And if it has a little thread or something that it's caught up in there, that's okay. You can cut that with scissors. Let me see, it had like just one thread. There we go. Hat band. And these eggs are jumping everywhere. Oh. Love it. Absolutely love this. Okay. Very good. All right. So now I am going to cut out the other two chickens pieces the exact same way.